In this episode of Motoring Box, I'm going to be replacing the radiator on my BA Falcon XR6 Turbo. This episode of Motoring Box is proudly supported by PWR, Advanced Cooling Technology. Now, if you're not familiar with my channel, this is my BA Falcon XR6 Turbo, which I picked up almost a year ago. And what we're going to be doing over the next couple of weeks, or maybe a couple of months, is we're going to be kicking off a small sort of a bolt-on series, putting some quality parts onto this car, and then eventually going to get it tuned and seeing what we can actually achieve with it. Now, this is not going to be the craziest build in the world because the BA Falcon XR6 Turbo is rather famous for having skinny connecting rods in these sort of first generation Turbo Barra engines. People call them spaghetti rods, which I think is a little bit dramatic, but it does limit the amount of power that you can screw out of these things with modifications. So that's really going to be the theme of this build as such. It's going to be fairly mild, but the parts which I'm going to bolt onto this thing are going to be quality upgrades over the OEM units. So we're starting off perhaps with one of the most boring parts, and that is the radiator. Now this is something that people might tend to skimp on, and they might tend to leave the stock radiator in place until it blows, which is kind of a bad idea because when the radiator blows, it is a show-stopping thing to happen. And it's really going to immobilize your car, you won't be able to get home, and you could do some serious damage if you overheat every single component in your engine. So that's what we're going to do, we're going to start with the radiator, and I'm sure you're all wondering what radiator I've chosen. Now, the logo in the introduction may have given you a hint, and really, it's true, I've gone with a PWR unit. I had a really firm idea in mind as to what I actually wanted to do with this car. I didn't want to skimp on parts, so I wanted to do it right, pay once, get a quality part, and then never have to replace it ever again. So that's really the theme of this, and from the onset, I know I wanted a PWR aluminium radiator, and I was about to actually buy one from an online marketplace and then I decided, you know what, I'm going to get in touch with PWR and see if they wanted to jump on board and sort of not sponsor the build, but get involved and support the channel and support the build on this car. And straight away they said yes and they gave me a bit of a discount on the part and I bought the radiator and also one additional part off them as well, which you'll see coming up soon. So which radiator did I actually go for? Well, it's actually right here and I haven't actually unboxed it and even had a look at it yet. So it is in this massive box. <laughs> so it is a PWR5100 and that is a manual radiator and it's also a 55 mil core. So I think that's roughly probably more than double the thickness of the core on the stock radiator. So it'd be really interesting to pull this stock standard one out and just compare the two because this one's obviously going to be a lot more chunky. And running a thicker core like this one is also going to help the car stay cooler on hot summer's days and also when you're really leaning on the engine. For example, at the drags or on a track day. It's not going to help your engine run cooler per se, because really that's the thermostat's job. This car currently has an 82 degree thermostat, so once the water temperature reaches that level, the thermostat begins to open, lets the hot water through the radiator, cycles it back through the engine, and it'll sort of open and close to keep the engine at that temperature. So really, a thicker radiator is not going to make the engine run cooler, but it is going to give the engine more cooling power to bring the temperatures down once the thermostat does open. So that's really the aim for today. We're going to be replacing the radiator. So there are a couple of things I need to do first before I can launch straight into this job. The first one is to actually open this thing up and have a gander at it, just to make sure it's the right part. And I just want to see the workmanship on this thing. I think it's going to look incredible. And then there's actually a few more things we need to do here in the engine bay before we take the old radiator out and then drop this one in. So let's take a look at this thing. So before we begin, we need to check our existing cooling system for any stray current. 
stray current in your coolant can cause electrolysis which can quickly ruin your brand new radiator. To do this you're going to need an analog voltmeter, connect the negative up to the negative post on the battery and then dip the positive end into your coolant, making sure you don't touch any other surfaces. With the engine running if your reading exceeds 50 millivolts, you're going to need to find the source of this current and then fix it prior to installing the new radiator. I couldn't find any stray current in my system so we're good to go. Before I can pull out the existing radiator I firstly need to remove the thermo fans. This is really simple, just a simple 10mm bolt on either side. Remove the connector and then the fans pull straight out. Since you've got your 10mm socket in your hand you can also remove the upper radiator mounts, a bolt on each one and then you can simply lift the bracket straight out. With the top of the radiator loose we can start draining the coolant by removing the lower radiator hose followed by the upper radiator hose and then the two additional hoses which run to the coolant overflow tank. At this point I was wondering why the hell the radiator wouldn't come out until I spotted that the air conditioning condenser is actually bolted to the front of it. So unfortunately I'm going to have to remove the front bar in order to loosen the condenser and then finally pull the existing radiator out. And now's a really good time to compare it to our brand new PWR unit. You'll notice that the standard radiator has plastic end tanks compared to the new one which is full aluminium. But perhaps the most impressive thing comparing these two radiators is the size of the core. The stock one is 26mm whereas the PWR radiator is 55mm. It is satisfyingly chunky and I can't wait to get it installed into the car. So I carefully lowered it down into place to make sure I didn't damage any of the fins and carefully lined up the bottom rubberized mounting points. Luckily it drops straight into place and I can now reinstall the top mounting brackets. With the radiator in place I can now reinstall the condenser by fitting the four bolts which I backed out earlier. Now before we refill the coolant it's actually a really good opportunity to replace your thermostat or even your hoses if they're looking a little bit worse for wear. Because I've replaced all of the cooling system items previously I'm going to refit the hoses so we can start filling the system. Fitting the top hose first followed by the bottom one and then the two hoses for the overflow tank. And now it's time for the coolant. I'm going to be using Neulon's premium long life red coolant. And for all of you out there who think that Barra's need green coolant the colour actually does not matter. What matters is the coolant specification and if you look up your Ford BA Falcon user manual you'll find that the Neulon red coolant actually satisfies Ford's specification and it satisfies PWR's specification as well. And if you run the engine for about a minute or two you will help to get some of the air which might be trapped in the system bled out into the overflow tank and you'll notice that the level of that tank will slowly drop. With the new radiator installed and the new coolant in place we need to do another check for stray current. We've passed this test a second time so we're good to go. So one of the final jobs is to drop in the thermo fans and this is actually extremely difficult as it turns out. Now there isn't any risk in damaging the fins on the radiator because they're kind of set in a little bit. So what you need to do is drop these fans in and then slowly work them down, looking at each side to check that it's not getting caught on anything on the way down. At first this seems like an impossible mission but if you just stick with it they will slowly drop down into place. And there's only about 2 centimeters of space between the thermo fans and the pulleys on the front of the engine. With the fans in place we can reinstall the bolts on either side and then plug in the electrical connector. And no the snorkel from the airbox does not fit anymore but I reckon with a little bit of persuasion from a heat gun we can mold it ever so slightly to fit around the new chunky radiator. Oh, all right guys we are done. Now that like most things I do here in the garage that was a way bigger job than I thought it was going to be. Of course you have to take the thermo fans out, you then have to unbolt the radiator, you have to take all the hoses off and I didn't even realize you had to unbolt the condenser from the front of the radiator but hey I guess that makes sense. Some of the older Falcons have worked on the condenser I think was mounted separately so that sort of caught me by surprise but uh, I'm really happy with how this radiator dropped in. All of the mounting points were bang on, especially where the condenser bolts onto the front of it. And uh, the toughest thing about it really was dropping those thermo fans back in. That was a really tight fit. That was like the worst game of Tetris you've ever played in your life. I really didn't think they were gonna go. I was sort of wondering like, was I meant to have the fans on first before I dropped the radiator back in? But then 
that would have caused other problems. So luckily there is just enough space. They must have worked it out. There's just enough space to get those fans back in, but geez, you had to work for it. So I ran the engine briefly and I uh, couldn't spot any leaks. Coolant's roughly where it needs to be. I'm not going to take it for a drive yet because I do have some other mods planned. So this car will hang out in the garage for a while. Do a few more mods to it and really what I've got planned, you're not really going to see the benefit of those mods until we get it tuned. So road test will have to wait. But I'm really excited to see how this radiator performs. It is a really beefy looking unit and I can just catch a bit of the welding here. See those beautiful welds on the corner of the tank and when you see it in the car it just looks business. It looks amazing. And look, it's Australian made as well. So as with most Australian products, it's not going to be the cheapest one on the market, but you are supporting local industries, which I think is really important. Local manufacturing, local jobs is a dying art. So if we can support the guys that are still doing it, you're doing them a solid, you're doing the country a solid. So really happy to be supporting PWR with their premium product. It's amazing. So thank you very much, guys. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. It's about 8 p.m. here. I'm going to go to bed. I'm really tired. <laughs> so, yeah, if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.